Hello, my name is Jeff Rolka. Thank you for checking out my video. This is a quick tip video. I did one just a week or so ago and really enjoyed it. It had been a long time and I realized I really enjoy doing these and there's an opportunity to really help vocalists make more of their voices. And so we're gonna do a quick tip on how to practice singing with a special dispensation towards being understood. And we can sum this up very simply, but somewhat paradoxically. Vowels phonate. The vowels are what phonate. They are what carry the tune. And your ability to be understood on stage is primarily related to the alignment of your vowels, not how hard you hit your consonants. And in fact, if you're really, really pushing those consonants out, you are quite likely disrupting the airflow in disadvantageous ways that is going to compromise the ability of your vowels to phonate effectively. This is why we do warm-ups and practice videos like the ones that I have here on my channel, if I may say so. Alignment of vowels is key. What do I mean by alignment of vowels? It's really quite straightforward. If I sing this scale with the two vowels E and A, one might say that they sound the same. You can hear that I'm changing vowels, but the intonation is good on the way up and good on the way down. The tone quality remains consistent, whether you like the sound of my voice or not, you can, it's consistent. And basically, the performance of the vowels is consistent. In order to do this, we have to reconcile the differences between these vowels. This is what warm-ups and practice videos, like the ones on my channel, are for. They create opportunities for you to compare and contrast the way that these vowels sound. Now, here's the kicker. We all come to these vowels from different places. So I grew up in the Midwest of the United States of America, and when I was growing up, I might have talked more like this for a long time. That's probably exaggeration, but it's much more forward in the mask. It's kind of sinusy and nasally, but over the years, I have adopted different modes of phonation, and in the process of learning to sing, we must reconcile these differences. Chiefly, we feel these differences between E, A, U, and those are like the narrower vowels, and A ah and O. A ah and O being what are thought of as wider vowels. But depending on where you're coming from, if you happen to be in Italy or France or in England or anywhere else in the world, in Russia or maybe in South America somewhere, you will have a slightly different mode of phonating those vowels and you have to listen to the color of the vowel and then reconcile them all. In general, E tends to be what people think of as spread. So we tend to kind of grimace and spread our faces like that to get an E. And we want to attenuate that with a little bit of feeling it more towards the rear of the aural cavity, A-U-R-A-L. So in the past, I may have sung E -A. And there you can hear my A has changed from an A vowel to more of an S sound. That, we do need a little bit of that when we get into our upper register, but we start in the comfortable range of our voices and learn to align the five cardinal vowels. E, A, A, O, U. We want them to sound the same. When we can do that, we can then start to move outwards from there towards the lower parts of our range and then ultimately into the zona de passaggio and over the secondo passaggio, or if you prefer, into the mix range and over the break. So zona de passaggio, mix range, secondo passaggio and break are synonymous. And then we can start to explore adding consonants and of course singing our repertoire. We also have to learn to only use as much of the consonants as is necessary to be understood. And how much is necessary depends on your genre. 
So, if you happen to be singing in the popular genres, you have quite a bit of freedom. You could choose to be rather unintelligible, and that's perfectly fine. Because there are plenty of singers in the pop genres that are really challenging to understand. There's, of course, entire websites devoted to how we have misheard lyrics. That's not just because we're mishearing them, that's also because we can adjust the enunciation of things in order to help our phonation be better suited, especially if we're going into the upper register of our voices. If, on the other hand, you're doing spoken word or you're doing a tone poem, I would argue that intelligibility or the ease of which it is to understand you is quite high. And you want to carefully consider how you're using those consonants so that you can articulate and get the message across. I would argue, too, that musical theater folks, really tough because you have some very dynamic, very challenging parts, but you also truly must be understood in order to keep the storyline moving forward. Careful assessment of the vowels, careful assessment of the consonants and where you are in your range, I think is really necessary to making sure that you can bring your best performance to the piece or part that you are playing. So vowel alignment helps you with sustaining good healthy habits makes it easy for people to understand you on stage in conjunction with good usage of your consonants and especially keeps the melody in play. The vowels phonate. They are what are going to carry the melody when you're singing your songs. As always, I hope this helps. My name is Jeff. Thank you if you've chosen to subscribe. There are lots of ways to support my channel. Those are all in the description and they do include Patreon where you can get transcripts and practice guides from the uh, work that I do here on YouTube. Thank you as always for watching. Take really good care of your voices. Enjoy singing. Hopefully we'll see you again. Bye.